Over the past week, I have researched career paths and resources for anyone looking to break into tech. This video will break down what each career path entails, specific skills and interests you should have if you want to go into that career path, and the best resources to get started on said career path. The career paths I will mention will be program management, software development, cloud engineering, and data science. Let's get into it. Timestamps for all the sections are down below in case you want to skip to anyone. The first career path on the list is program management. This is the least technical of all the roles I will mention today. A program manager is basically in charge of handling all aspects of a technical project for the organization, except development. They are responsible for initiating programs, tracking progress, and serving as support in case issues arise. They typically plan and attend a lot of meetings and coordinate communications for their team. They are also the ones that usually follow up on action items after meetings. In some companies, they perform the role of Scrum Master by running daily stand-ups, sprint planning meetings, and ensuring that the team delivers on the work that they have promised in a timely manner. Program management might be good for you if you're interested in tech and enjoy planning and organizing, but don't necessarily want to get into the core technical aspects like coding. As I said earlier, you'll be planning and attending a lot of meetings where you'll most likely be the one moderating the meetings. This means you'll be doing a decent amount of talking, which may sometimes involve conflict resolutions, explaining why deadlines were missed, asking for budget, and more, meaning you may have to be confrontational as well, so keep that in mind. If you're interested in getting into program management, consider taking this LinkedIn course on being a technical program manager. It is very robust and teaches you everything you need to know about being a program manager, from the agile practices to the leadership skills. When you're done with the course, you also get a certificate that you can then add to your LinkedIn profile and your resume. Next on our list is cloud engineer. Before the age of cloud services, companies were responsible for buying and maintaining the servers where their code and services ran. They owned physical servers in data centers and data farms and would be responsible for upgrading the servers, installing patches, scaling the servers, networking, and more. With the rise and popularity of cloud services, there is no need to worry about that anymore. The cloud service handles all of that for you. You simply tell them what type of service you want and they'll give it to you. They offer tons and tons of services and solutions, and it can get overwhelming sometimes. They also have best practices for using the services so you don't run into issues like getting hacked or losing your data. It can be hard for developers to focus on knowing everything about the cloud service and building software at the same time. So this is where cloud engineers come into the picture. They are pretty much the experts on cloud services. They assist development teams by serving as a resource and answering questions about cloud services. They'll usually come in during the design phase of the project and suggest best cloud architecture, service, or cloud framework for a project. They also help troubleshoot issues related to cloud components and keep an eye out on the services to ensure the best practices are being followed. Depending on a specific company, there may be some coding in involved as a cloud engineer, but it's usually not as much compared to being a software developer. To become a cloud engineer, it is strongly advised to get a certification from one of the major cloud providers. AWS is the most popular one, but there is Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and more. My suggestion would be to get certified with AWS since it's the most popular and the most in-demand one, then move on to the rest of them as you see fit. As someone who has worked with all three, they all provide the exact same resources, just with different names, so once you learn one, getting used to the other ones shouldn't be too hard. If you're interested in getting into cloud engineering, I would highly suggest you check out this video by GPS on YouTube. They go into details on how to become a cloud engineer in 2022 and also have a course you can follow to learn the fundamentals of cloud computing and get your certifications. Next on the list is data science. The world runs on data. From social media applications to self-driving cars, everything is data-driven. Data is collected every day by the services we use like Google, Instagram, Facebook, and more. If we look at the raw data, it can be hard to interpolate and find meaning in it. It may look like random numbers in an Excel spreadsheet, but that data is the most powerful resource in the world right now because understanding that data tells us so much about people's behaviors. This is where data scientists come into play. They use statistics, math, and programming to analyze, process, and model data. They then interpret the results to create actionable plans for companies and organizations. These actionable items could be a grocery store choosing to order more for a specific item around a specific time of the year, or a company like Instagram choosing to move one button from one part of the screen to another to increase engagement or farmers choosing to plant crops at a specific time during the year to maximize their yield. Data science is relevant in so many sectors, from healthcare to consumer products and more. 
as long as there are people involved, there is data to be collected and understanding the data can lead to implementing actionable steps to solve problems and make things more efficient, leading to profit for companies. As I stated earlier, the world runs on data and data scientists pretty much turn that data into useful information. If you're interested in data science, I would suggest watching this video by Joma Tech on YouTube, where he goes into what data science entails and explains the importance of data science to companies. After watching that, I would recommend checking out Data Science for All. It is a free program where you're pretty much taught everything you need to know to get started as a data scientist or a data analyst. The final resource would be to check out any of the various courses on a site like LinkedIn Learning. I recommend LinkedIn Learning a lot because many of their courses come with certifications that you can then add to your LinkedIn profile once you've completed the course. You can also add classes you've taken to your profile as well. Remember, learning the concepts is not just enough. After learning them, make sure you work on projects with them to become more proficient with the skills and so you have something to show when you're looking for a job. Last but not least, we have software development. A software developer designs, builds, and maintains software. That software could be operating systems, business applications, web applications, mobile applications, automation, scripting, and a lot more. Of all the careers I've mentioned in this video, this is the broadest because you can be a software engineer in any field and work to build software that solves complex problems. Software developers are usually broken down into three areas. There's front-end developers who build the parts of the site or the project that the user interacts with. They write the code to display buttons, animations, and everything the user sees. They are mostly web developers and work a lot with web frameworks like React. Then there are back-end developers who deal with everything the user doesn't see. They handle the data for the applications. They work with databases and build APIs for front-end developers to get and send data to and from the databases. Finally, we have a full-stack developer that does everything. They do both front-end and back-end development. I am a full-stack developer because I love doing both. If you're looking to become a software developer, there are a few options you can take. The first and obvious one is you can go to college and study computer science or computer engineering. If you don't have that option, then the second one would be joining a boot camp. Boot camps are essentially two to four month programs where you are taught everything you need to know to get a job as a developer. Like college, they do cost money. However, some of them offer scholarships or give you the option to pay them back after you've started a job as a software developer. The final option is for you to teach yourself. A lot of people seem to be going with this option. The idea is to use resources you find online to teach yourself how to code. There are many free and good resources on sites like YouTube, Free Code Camp, Code Academy, and more that can teach you everything you need to learn. If you need a more structured learning format, you can pay for premiums on sites like LinkedIn Learning, Code Academy, Udemy, and more for a fraction of what it would cost to go to a college or a bootcamp. If you're looking to learn how to code and want to be self-taught, feel free to follow this guide I have created. It is a template you can download and has the relevant information for you to learn. It is broken down into modules. Each module has links to both free and paid resources where you can learn everything in that module. There is also a checkbox for you to keep track of the items as you learn them. This is completely free and the link to this is down in the description below. Everything I've given you is just a resource. The next steps is for you to follow through and take action. Go to these links, read through them and check them out to see if it's something you're interested in. Create an account if you can, that can be your first step. It can be intimidating and feel like there's so much to learn and understand. Trust me, we've all been there and we all started from somewhere. If it makes you feel better, no one knows everything and we pretty much all Google stuff all the time. We're pretty much faking it till we make it. Start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. And remember, consistency is more important than perfection. Keep going at it consistently and at your own pace and you'll be an expert in no time. Links to all the resources I have mentioned are down in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Peace.